This is Demilite version 0.8.1 with a bunch of improvements over version 0.8. The biggest change in this version is I've gone to using automated SMD parts assembly through JLC PCB's assembly service, and y'all, it is an awesome change. This is going to save me so much time in terms of prototyping and ultimately in getting this project to something like completion. You see, the longest part of assembling each of these lights isn't the 3D printing. It takes about five hours, but you don't have to babysit it the whole time. If your printer is well-tuned, you just hit print and it, it goes, and you come back five hours later and it's done. No, the, the longest part is actually assembling the components onto the PCB. Doing these by hand with all these little 0603 passive parts and this TQFP package, which is the processor, took between one to two hours, depending on how much errors I made and how much rework I had to do. Now that I've moved to automated assembly, the boards come to me with all the surface mount parts pre-attached, so it's just these through-hole components and connectors that have to be taken care of at my end. I am so excited that this worked. I cannot believe that these just came out of the box working and functional. Yeah, look at that. Oh, it's blinking. Blinking away. I ordered these boards on a Friday afternoon, and they showed up at my door the following Thursday, tested and working. That is so cool. This was a great learning process for me as well. There are some gotchas with how the JLC PCB assembly service works, and I'd love to talk about them more at some point, but for now, I'm just gonna point you to this video by SDG Electronics, who goes through a fair number of the gotchas in terms of file types and what kind of files you need to submit. So what else has changed in version 0.8.1? Well, there's a fair number of changes to the 3D printed files. I went back and lined up some of the holes in the base with where the connectors actually go on the PCB. That seemed like a good idea. I also am experimenting with some little clip in place tabs to hold the two sides of the body together. But at least on my printer, the walls of this little tab were so thin that they snapped off almost immediately. So that needs another pass. Oh, and the lid to the base now, instead of using these little two millimeter melting in insert nuts, which were really kludgy and not super easy to use, that's now just a slide-in press-fit lid. I started with a tab here on the outside to hold the lid in, but that also broke off and turned out to be unnecessary, so press-fit it is. I also got myself a little of this cable wrapping shield here just to tidy up the wires from the base to the head, and I think that looks really nice. So, changes still to be made. I need to figure out some better way of mounting the PCB into the base. I had again planned to use these little two millimeter insert nuts, but it's a really kludgy and imprecise solution. I'm thinking maybe one M3 screw right down the middle of the PCB should hold things in place. I'll also need to have another crack at how the two halves of the head hold together, and I really should find some way of securing this pan servo cover in place. Right now it's just press fit onto the servo, which I don't love, so not sure what's gonna happen there. I'm really starting to build up a little menagerie of past versions of this light, which just sit on my wall to remind me that nothing is ever going to be perfect, but it's always good to do just one more revision to uh, clear up some of these issues. That's all for now. See you next time.